there, I'm Lara from Five Out of Four Patterns and welcome to day one of our Valerie, Kids Valerie, Men's Val, uh, So Along, <laughs> sponsored by So So English Fabrics. Boy, was that a mouthful. Today we are printing, we are taping, we are uh, cutting out, we are making adjustments and we are cutting out our fabrics. That's what we're doing. Um, so let's get started. All right, here we are. We are ready to get our pattern uh, pages that we've printed and our uh, tape, and we are ready to get this thing assembled. Um, I will post in the um, blog post itself, I will post the uh, links to how to print and how to assemble, but if you watch this, this will show you exactly how to assemble. So you shouldn't need that other video. So here we go. As you can see, I am putting together the kids version of this um, rather than the adult version. So you're going to see some variation in um, pieces. That's basically just the um, full bodice adjustment uh, front bodice piece. Obviously the kids version does not come, or the men's version, with that pattern piece, just the women's. But I'm just showing you um, how to put the pattern together so it doesn't really matter that it's not part of what I'm doing right this second. If you follow the instructions, if you're making the Valerie, and you follow the instructions for measuring, um, it tells you how to determine whether or not you need the FBA front bodice piece, which is the full, uh, full bust adjustment, excuse me, bodice piece. Um, if you follow those instructions you'll easily be able to figure out what size and if you, whether or not you need um, that full bust adjustment if you have any questions you know ask in the group um, either in the group you can even ask in the event that's fine but in the group the main group the main five out of four patterns group in, on Facebook has uh, a, so many people in it who are so so helpful so if you have any questions you can certainly ask there. Um, other than that, the pattern pieces, um, it's a lot less pages for the kids, of course, but the pattern pieces are basically the same. Now, once we finish putting all of this together, um, we'll cut it out and then cut out the paper pattern itself, and then we'll uh, make any adjustments we might need. So for example, um, I always do for myself a uh, full bicep adjustment. So I will do that to this, this pattern piece here. If you find, if you've checked the finished measurements of this pattern and you find that your measurements don't quite, um, like you're too, you're tall than the measurements, you need more length or you need less length, um, then you're going to need to lengthen or shorten your pattern pieces before you cut your pattern out. And there are instructions for lengthening and shortening your pattern pieces in the tutorial itself. So I did find, um, for me, I like things to be a little bit longer. I don't like tops to be too short. I just don't feel comfortable. Um, it's just my personal preference. So I did add a couple of inches to the bodice itself. So you want to pay attention to the instructions because of you've got the color blocking. And so like this is your, your bodice when that comes together. Um, uh, you need to pay attention to the instructions as to um, how to achieve that uh, length adjustment. So it's in there, it's in the tutorial. Just take a look at it um, before you jump in. And as always, I highly encourage a muslin um, so that you can work out all of the kinks as far as what adjustments you might think you need to make. So if you don't know if you need to make any adjustments, then make a muslin, try it on. And what is a muslin? We've talked about this before. I'm happy to say it again because I know that there are new people out there. Um, a muslin is like a sample garment. What it does is it um, gives us the opportunity, opportunity excuse me, to make the pattern as is 
or with minimal adjustment, whatever we know we're gonna to have to do. Um, and then uh, we see it as a, it's a sample. It's in, um, as far as fabric, you don't use muslin fabric, which is a woven. Um, depending on the fab on the pattern itself that you're using, you that might be appropriate. But for most of our patterns, they're knit patterns, so you don't wanna use muslin fabric, because that's a woven. Um, you'll wanna use um, a fabric that is somewhat similar to your final fabric. So I'm using, say, French terry. So I'll find, you know, some old French terry that I have um, that's similar in weight, and I will make a sample. Um, sometimes these samples are wearable. We call them wearable muslins, muslins, but sometimes they're not because you've got so many adjustments that need to be made, depending on who you are um, and your body type. And it is okay. It is not abnormal to need to make adjustments. Our bodies are our own and every single body is a little bit different and that's okay. We can't design a pattern that fits every single body perfectly, which is why we have to learn as sewists how to make adjustments for our body. So for me, it's the full bicep. Um, and for me, it wouldn't matter, as far as my bicep is concerned, it wouldn't matter, like I wear, this is a 2X that I have on. And so I'm, I'm a plus size woman and my arms, my biceps are larger, but it wouldn't matter if I wasn't a plus size woman. My biceps have always been larger, so I would need to do a full bicep regardless of the size that I wore. So I say all that to say, don't get caught up on having to make adjustments um, if you're new to this. Don't get caught up on that. Just learn how to make the adjustments and be thrilled that you can make something that actually fits your body. That's just so exciting when you're a person who doesn't just fit into things out of the store or out of the pattern um, off the paper and you have to make little adjustments and then you do and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I made something that actually fits my body. And so anyway, I'm talking a lot, um, obviously. Um, but I wanted to make it clear that I don't want new people, if you're new out there or fairly new or what, or maybe you're not new and they just need to be encouraged a little bit. Don't, don't be upset if you have to make adjustments or if it doesn't turn out perfect the first time. That's how we learn how to do things. That's how we learn how to fix things. I mess up all of the time and I've been, I've been sewing since middle school and I'm not in middle school anymore, let's just say that. Um, so, and we all still make mistakes. Every single one of us will be happy to tell you that. All right, so we've taped it all together. It's time to cut out our proper size and cut out the options that we're using. So I'm going to cut out, um, what am I cutting out? <clears throat> I'm going to cut out a hood and I'm going to cut out a funnel neck and then I'm going to cut out my, I'm just gonna do a regular long sleeve cuff. I'll link how to do the um, thumb hole cuffs in the blog post so that you can see how that is done. Um, I'm not doing a short sleeve, so I'm not gonna need this pattern piece, um, nor will I need the neck band piece. I'll just need the hem band. So let's get to cutting. Okay, we're up to a point where we are starting to um, cut out our bodice pieces. Our bodice, front bodice A, front bodice B, back bodice A, and back bodice B. Now, if you don't wanna do a hem band, pay attention to, it says here, um, there's tutorial uh, instructions. You know, well, there are instructions in the tutorial, that's what I'm trying to say, um, to do that uh, if you wanna not have the hem band. I'm doing the hem band, of course. Now, a couple of things we need to note. We've got these little diamonds here. I'm doing the size eight, so here's, the, here's a diamond, here's a diamond, here's a diamond, here's a diamond. Now, those are for marking. Um, they're for helping you when it's time to do the pockets. So make, you cut, make sure you cut out a little notch there um, so that you can line up that pocket correctly. 
Additionally, on the center part of our bodice pieces here, there's a line. That's a marking to help you line up this piece with this piece. Now, you don't have to do this, but I also notch out the pattern piece at those lines as well. Um, that way I don't have to go back and mark them later um, because you will have to go back and mark them. That's just the way it works, okay? So I think that's it. Oh, here's the pocket here. I'm doing the size eight, which is the big one. And there's also a marking there. So make sure you notch that out. Um, it just makes it a whole lot easier um, once you're in the swing of sewing so you don't have to go back and mark things. Um, if, you, if you forget to do it, just make sure you mark your fabric before you set it to the side so that you can, um, you know, once it comes time to put these pieces together, you don't have to really think about that too much. The markings are already done. We can now move on to uh, making any adjustments that we not, might need to make from length to uh, full biceps, whatever it is, the adjustment that you need to make, um, this is the time to do it. Now that we've, once you've done that, we can grab our fabric. I want to show you the beautiful fabric I got from So So English. So let me put this all up here. This is a French terry. I kid you not, this is so beautiful. Um, let me get it out here so you can see how lovely it is. Now granted, it's the middle of winter here, but this has enough lightness and brightness to it that it just, ugh, oh, it's gorgeous. So I have this French terry that I am pairing with this French terry, which is also pretty lovely. Now it isn't, let me turn it this way. It isn't a perfect match as far as coordinates are concerned, but it's pretty darn close and I just love these trees. Now it might look a little Christmassy to you um, and that's fine. It also looks wintry, but it's pretty and it's bright. So this is what I'm gonna use. Um, I really love it. Now, additionally, I have some rib knit right here. This is some white rib knit, uh, also from So So English. Um, I'm telling you, like I pulled this out of the of the shipping envelope and I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff is awesome. It feels so nice and it's a nice heavy weight. I've bought some at some um, brick and mortar stores, I won't say their names, uh, some rib knit like this and it's been super thin and it's been really um, just not nice. Doesn't have a lot of recovery. It's soft or whatever, but it just doesn't have a lot of recovery. This one, however, oh, look at that. It is awesome. I can't wait to use it. I'm really, really, really pumped about this. So anyway, we've got our rib knit for our bands. That's what this is for. We have both of our French Terry's for our color blocked top. Okay. Now, I think it's time to jump in. All right, I'm gonna start with the, with the striped French terry. Now, I'm going to be doing the, um, the, bodice, the bodice pieces first. So each of those pieces, because you're color blocking them together, um, you're not cutting them on the fold or anything like, you know, many times you would. Um, so uh, I'm not folding it. All right, I'm going to lay it out. Let me push it this way so it's not in my way. I'm gonna lay it out like this. All right, so selvage is here and selvage is here. This here is where it was cut. Okay, so selvage to your right and left. All right, and we're gonna leave it like that. Let me move my tape and stuff. I'm gonna grab some pattern weights because I'll need those to hold up everything. All right, so I'm going to line this up here. So you could actually see, hopefully, all the way here at the end is my selvage. So you just wanna make sure the selvage is to your right and the selvage is to your left and you have one layer of fabric here. All right, I have said this before, do not let your fabric just hang off your bench. 
See what it does? It totally pulls it off your bench and you don't want to do that. So I'm kind of gathering it up here. All right. This is so pretty. I'm so excited. So, so pretty. Okay. All right, now um, pay attention to your pattern on your, um, on your fabric. You want everything to look the way you want it to look, okay? So you might have to move things around here and there, and that's okay. Okay, so what do I need to make out of this fabric? I'm going to make the upper portion of each bodice, of the back bodice and the front bodice. So these are, this is the upper portion. The upper portion includes the neckline. Okay, so you have two of those here. So your stretch is this way, okay? And your grain is this way. So you just wanna double check your stretch. Stretch is generally, as I've said in the past, selvage to selvage. So this should be your greatest stretch right here. Now you could fussy cut this a little bit more. I'm gonna eyeball it because that's just who I am. All right, what other pattern pieces do we have that require this fabric? Does this fit? Oh, it does. Okay, so because I need, I actually need this piece, I didn't want to waste this fabric. <clears throat> now, I also will be cutting the sleeves out of this, and I may even cut the pocket. It depends on, I just want to use up all these extra little pieces I have here and there. Um, I know that the pattern tutorial shows you how to kind of um, recommends how to lay everything out. Um, Sometimes you just have to do with do what you have to do with what you have. And so that's kind of what I'm doing with this, okay? So I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll, we'll uh, contend with these pieces and see what we can salvage there. All right, I have four pockets that I need to cut out. Whoopsies. So I'm gonna grab that pattern piece and I'm gonna see if I can't get, these will not be seen. So um, we just wanna make sure the stretch is going the right direction. So I'm gonna do And this is my last one, four. All right, so we were able to get all four pocket pieces out of scraps, which is great. Okay, so the next thing I have left to do for, for this requires things being cut on the fold, okay? So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna turn this this way. So my selvages were right to left, this way, a selvage over here, a selvage over here. Now my selvage is this way, front to back. Um, that's, I'm just, I want you to know how I'm adjusting my fabric. So I'm folding it selvage to selvage. Okay, so I've got my fold is here, okay? And so my greatest stretch is selvage to selvage, so it's this way, okay? Now, I have two things that need to be cut on the, or one thing that needs to be cut on the fold, and that is this uh, hood, and then I need to cut two sleeves. So this is the piece, I'm having to turn this upside down, because if I do it this way, my fold isn't here, and the fold line is here, so I have to turn it upside down so that it hits the fold, okay? So this is, should be on the fold, just this little piece here. So I'm gonna line that up on the fold. Make sure, okay, everything's good to go up here. Okay, so let me show you what we've got here. This is our um, side hood pattern piece. So it connects at this middle piece like this. It looks super weird, I agree, okay? And you'll put print, your pr print, you'll cut one in the main, this is the main, and you'll cut another one um, in your lining, which will be my um, 
our, my coordinating fabric, okay? So we'll have to come back and we'll have to cut another one of these. No big deal. Same with the center hood piece. We'll have to cut another one of these in our coordinate. All right, so let's set that to the side. All right, the next thing I need to do in this fabric, I'm making sure I'm not missing anything. I'm not, is sleeves. Okay, so when I'm cutting out my, my sleeve patterns, um, depending on um, the pattern, it either has a notch for um, the front or it has a label that this is the front of the, um, of the pattern piece. So this will attach to the front bodice and this side will attach to the back bodice. So, so what I'm doing is, um, what I normally do is I, I another, put another notch here so that when I'm putting things together, I don't have to think about, oh, which side of this goes towards the front. So I put a notch. If you forget to put a notch, put a pin on one side of your pattern piece, just on one of them, so that um, when you're looking, putting your pattern together, you know which which is the front and so you know which sleeve to use for which armhole. I hope that that makes sense. It's generally the way I do it just to make my life a little bit easier when it comes time to um, assemble everything. All right, let's put our sleeves to the side. Let's grab our coordinate. So again, selvage, selvage to the right, selvage to the left. Now this has a print obviously, um, but it is not specific in direction. So the trees are kind of, kind of everywhere. The only thing that needs to be cut out of this fabric or things uh, would be the the other bodice pieces. So you want to just line this up to where it makes the most sense. Um, pay attention to your um, stretch and pay attention to your pattern. Um, I'm just trying to be really good <laughs> with my use of fabric because I want to be able to use this for other things. So I think I'm gonna do this this way. Now you may not be able to put your, depending on the print of your fabric, you may not be able to put your pattern pieces like this. That's why you have to pay attention. If your pattern is directional, which mine is not, it's everywhere um, in all directions, then you will not be able to do this this way. Otherwise it will look weird. Now if you're okay with the way that looks and you want it to look like that, that's fine. But just pay close attention. Um, to what your, the, the print on your fabric is doing. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, all right, we've cut our bodice piece. Now I'm going to cut, we need to cut our hood pieces out of this coordinate. All right, again, my, since my fold is on this side, I have to turn my pattern piece. If my fold was over here, I could turn my pattern piece right side up. It doesn't matter, it makes no difference in this situation. Sometimes right side up and upside down make difference, make a difference, but in this particular way, it does not. Okay, let's get that cut out. Again, our stretch needs to be across this section of the um, pattern piece, so selvage to selvage has the greatest stretch. Now, the stretch needs to go this way, so this way, okay? Um, I'm just taking, oh, how do I wanna do this? Let's do this end, okay? Now this, I have the wrong side up, that's okay. Not a big deal. You just wanna make sure that your stretch is correct. All right. <clears throat> Now we are done with this fabric. We can move on to our 
rib knit. So let's put this to the side. Let's grab our rib knit. Okay, the only thing we need our rib knit for, well, there are three things we need our rib knit for. We need it for our um, sleeve bands. We need it for our hem band. And I'm also gonna use it for my piping. I'm actually going to fold it selvage to selvage. And let's just see what we need here. Okay, so let's start with our piping. All right, so if you pull up your tutorial, I'm pulling it up on my phone. This is the Kids Valerie. Um, the same, it's gonna be the same as the, the regular Valerie or the men's Val. And you just scroll through all the beginning stuff. And you get to where the tutorial starts, all right? And it says at the very top, creating the bodice, if you want to add a strip of piping to the color block seam of the bodice, you'll need to do this first, okay? So that we need to add that bodice piping. So if you click on the link there, it's gonna take you to the bodice, the, um, the pages that say adding bodice piping. And what it has here is it has a chart of how long your piece of, of binding or piping needs to be. So I'm gonna use the chart. We know it needs to be 1.25 inches this way, okay, um, or long. And what size am I doing, size eight? 20.75 inches this way wide. So 1.25 inches long um, for me, Yours will be different, 20.75 inches wide. All right, so I'm gonna get something to mark this fabric with. So I just wanna double check that I have enough here. Um, close, but not quite. So I'm gonna have to cut two of them um, and we'll have just a little bit of a scrap here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, from this edge, I'm gonna measure 1.25 inches. And from that, I'm gonna measure another 1.25 inches so I can cut two strips. So we'll start here. Now, why am I cutting two strips? Because I even questioned myself momentarily. Because if you're doing this piping, you're doing it on the front and the back, most likely. You don't have to. You can do it just on one side. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. But I'm doing it on the front and back. Okay, so here's my first 1.25. Um, now I'm going to measure again another 1.25. So now I'm going to open these up. Um, I'm going to be making another one. This might be what I need. So I'm gonna set this to the side because I will be able to use those scraps. All right, this, this is for our pi piping. Um, I'm gonna grab a clip just to clip them together and set that aside. All right, so my measuring tools can be moved. Now, I still need my rib knit. All right, and it is folded still, salvage to salvage. I've got a couple things to cut. I've got um, a hem band and I have sleeves sleeve cuffs, I'm sorry. So I have to cut two of each of them, okay? And it tells me the stretch needs to go this way. And obviously the stretch goes salvage to salvage. So I'm gonna line this up here on this raw edge. All right, let's grab our rib knit, put it to the side. Now, you don't have to use rib knit. If you don't have rib knit, you don't have to use it. You can use cotton lycra. That would be a great option if you've got a nice weight cotton lycra. You could also use, if you have a decent um, double brush poly, that would work fine too. I wouldn't use a rayon spend, spandex. Um, it just doesn't have enough full recovery. These bands here, these are double brush poly and they're great. They're soft and they, they do the job, okay? Your rayon spandex, you would not be able to pull up they would just fall down um, so you can use double brush poly um, you just want it to be a nice quality one but cotton lycra would be a good substitute um, but if you have ribbing and decent ribbing definitely use it um, this is beautiful just really beautiful okay all right so we've cut all of our pieces out. Now, if I haven't cut out your option, that's okay. Um, I have other things that I need to cu uh, cut out. I just don't wanna bore you with a video of me cutting out another Valerie. Um, I will be cutting out a um, funnel neck. So I've done a hood and I'll do a funnel neck. Um, 
and just, uh, yeah, so if I did not cut out your pattern pieces, that's okay. Um, cut out the pattern pieces that you are going to use for this pattern. And I will see you tomorrow for day two where we will get this bodice and the piping all put together.